title because she was teaching English, how she got into these low ocean community to be able to examine them, is she was teaching them English. So one of her female students remarked that in the United States, when this image, and this is a very difficult group because as a group, most of them are very uneducated where they came from. So the language learning, uh, some of them are barely literate or not literate, and so it's, it's a very big problem. So this woman, who a low ocean woman who's a student in her class said, uh, when a Lao wife returns from a long day at the factory, she might tell her husband, I'm tired, you clean and cook. What is that doing? She is beginning to change her identity where she would never say that in the old country. And I love this. My mother said the same thing. My mother never held a job in her life. She was enough of a traditional woman from the old world. She never did. And when we came to America, she still never held a job. Well, she never learned English either. But she would always say to my father, oh, I can go out to work, but there won't be any dinner. <laughs> so it's the same thing. It's like, this is my role, that's your role. So that's what they say. But what actually happens is the women go to the factory, just like the ones in Austria in 75. These are women in the 2000s, but they do exactly the same thing. And what happens? The Cambodian men have lost many of the traditional markers of their status in, in Laos. In the United States, they own no land. Remember again, those Austrians stayed on the farm because they own the land. They come to the United States, they own no land. They experience very high rates of unemployment because the low-level jobs like in factories are always easier for women to get. They're better employees, they don't make trouble. And they have lost any traditional leadership roles they might have had in the village. So no seniority status of the village, no land, unemployment, plus their wives now have gone out to work. Plus, because they've gone out to work, they've learned at least some English and they haven't learned any English. So what happens? Husband often then undergo dramatic, not just husbands, both in the marriage, undergo dramatic identity shifts as their wives enter the wage labor force and the balance of power begins to change in the family. Uh, and here is what, I love this quote, here is two guys talking. Two Lao men talking. One says, girls got to be second, man be number one. Whatever man say, girl got to do. Girl over there in Lao, listen, like a wife. He's speaking uh, pidgin English also, right? His friend says, yeah, when they come here, they say, why? So she, has, she talks back. Why, why? I have to listen to my husband. Whatever husband say, why I got to listen and do says the other guy, most of Lao people want their wife to stay home. His friend says, yeah, like wife always raise kids and cook. First guy, but when they come here, they complain a lot. Other one says, they come here, they like be boss. Yeah, equality is supposed to be like that. No, 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 they want to be on top, that's why. They want equality, they want to be on top. The other guy laughs, yeah, women want to be on top. The women, on the other hand, talk, of course, about what the, their husbands want to uh, keep the old rules. Uh, and they talk about how um, there are many more divorces, etc. Uh, so, although Lao traditional gendered cultural practices are an important part of Lao women's identity, these women actively negotiate and create new identities after migration, and sometimes that causes divorce in the family and it breaks up the family, but in all cases, it gives some more independence to the women. Uh, along with the, as just as a footnote to the, uh, to the uh, Catalan, there's a, another area of Spain that has a dual language issue, and that's in the north of Spain, which is the Basque area. And that was also under the dictatorship of uh, Franco, was totally repressed. But now more and more there, you've seen in the papers, independence movements and so forth. The big difference as far as the diagnostic situation is what? Again, what is the strange diagnostic situation in Catalonia? The, the low status people speak Andalus Spanish, which is the national language, although they speak not a high status version of it. 
and Catalan, we could say, is a different language that which has its no which has no nation anymore, but it has a very large historical past and a literature in the past, so it has a certain regional status. So neither so both of those languages have some kind of status in there in clash. Not like Berber having no anything and Arabic being up here. But what happens? in the Basque area, the same way that there are Catalan nationalists who want to separate or have independence in Euskera, that's Basque for Basque, there are many people who want that also, but what is the big difference? What do you know about the Basque language? Well, it's, it's a very unusual language. Do you know something about it? It's not Indo-European. It's not even Indo-European, so it has no relation, not just to romance, to any European language, so it's very hard to learn. So it's very different. It's only spoken in the north of Spain and in the south of France and in, so across the Pyrenees, two sides of the Pyrenees. So it, has not, it never had a nationality. It never had a nation. And it was always a peasant language because it had no city to go with it. It had no literary past, but it is a local language of a people who felt themselves to be very different a kind of island of difference in, in that region. And now they, many of them are clamoring. Oh, and then the language was virtually lost because it was not allowed to be taught in schools. And one of the things was to revive the language after the death of Franco, much like uh, Irish is being revived very often after it's virtually dead. So there are people your age, for example, who are learning it, who speak much better Basque than their parents or their grandparents. And they're t so they're trying to revive it the way kind of the way Hebrew was created in you. So in a sense, they're creating the Basque language, but it has no historical literature or anything to go with it. And all the textbooks talk about it in a male terms because it's an agricultural culture. So Basque is gendered very male also. So it's a very problematic situation. What we didn't get to is the last part of it. Uh, there's a wonderful article which I will try to do briefly next time, so I'll tell you to take a look at this. It's uh, Hindi, uh, lesbians, and transgender people. And I'll uh, ask you to look at Tonga again. Remember Tonga in the very first unit? And that's really about diagnostic too, so you want to put that in, into this box. What is the language and what are the prestige? And so I'll just do a little bit uh, on Wednesday but we're going to start the next unit. So I'll write you another one of my famous long notes telling you what we're doing.